I am at a freaking loss with this car, guys. No matter what I do, I can't get this thing from the stop over boosting. Okay, first of all, I wanna go ahead and mention that, and I don't even think I did mention it in the last video, and I should have, because there's a big difference between the problem I was having before I started tuning and the problem I'm having now. Obviously, the problem I've been trying to fix is that fake overboosting that the car was doing because excess pressure would be built up in the uh, charge pipes here before the manifold and you know set off the tip sensor the problem i'm having now is legit overboost that there is way too much manifold pressure on this side and that's a problem what i failed to mention is i've readjusted my wastegate arm to be a couple turns shorter. Why would I do that? Well, first of all, even where it's at now is still not even near the correct amount of length. There's no preload on it at all. Um, and where it was before was so much like, I guess, negative preload, uh, you would put it. I guess that's how you would say it. You know, it's actually slightly pushing the door open a little bit not closed it's always creating kind of like a boost leak but it worked and it kept boost bikes from going where they're going to now like i'm seeing close to 30 and it's not good now thankfully this new engine can take 30 psi but the tune ain't set up for it so as long as i get out of it when i see the spike all is good if I try to run it extended periods of time without making other adjustments, we're going to have another one of those. So obviously there is an issue here. Um, and I don't know because I'm this is all new to me. I'm new to tuning, right? I have not one clue what parameter in HP tuners I need to adjust to compensate for this. Because once again, this damn turbo is spooling up like crazy now. This is due to these camshafts I put in here, the Ford Performance camshafts. What I don't understand is why I can't keep the turbo speed under control. I've adjusted the wastegate duty cycle, and not only that, I've realized that this line here, your, your canister pressure, I guess dome pressure, um, you know, I've adjusted that too, so there's a lot of pressure pushing onto this to keep it open, yet no, no solutions. We're still getting massive spikes, even the throttle closing, massive spikes. This turbocharger wants to move some air now, and I can't keep it from doing it. It just wants to make power. <laughs> We're not there yet. I got to get this thing under control, and the only way I was able to get that somewhat under control was by manually forcing that wastegate door open. I cannot get the wastegate actuator or the car to command enough pressure on the actuator to keep that door open. And I'm sure maybe there's a way, I just don't know it. The way I do know that works is adjusting the arm length so that door is cracked open a little bit and letting some pressure go by, keeping the turbine speed down. And I'm gonna revert back to that because this is what I found out. We're gonna go take a look at the logs here real quick. Okay, so here we are with the, the stock baseline file. Remember, I showed this in the first video when I first did a data log. This is what I did. This was before I adjusted that wastegate actuator arm. And if you look here, you look up here at the, the green line, this is where a throttle opens. See how it opens up 100 and decent plateau and then yeah, it drops down. But it does that because if you watch right next to it, the boost level, 16, 17, starts creeping up. And then 19, 20, 21, it hits its target. And then that's when the throttle starts shutting. That's what that does. That's what it's supposed to do to limit boost, thus limiting torque. Look at tip actual versus tip desired. When our boost is pretty much at through the through the run here, 29, 30, 32, 31. Tip actual is only 39. Right here it goes up to like its max value. I don't know why, but these are small things I can figure out. But for the most part, it's staying pretty close to each other within 10 psi of desired and max for the most part, at least through the run. Remember, this run was done with a lot of ethanol in the tank, like too much. Yeah, we're 0.9 lambda, it's a little lean, um, but boost did come down. Boost probably would have stayed mo up more if it wasn't for that. 
So that, that was a problem due to, to the fuel I had in the car, not necessarily anything else. Taking that part out of the equation, if we look at it, I know the car has met its torque value, which on uh, the factory cow is 350 pound-feet, 349, something like that. And how I know that is right when the boost comes in and it takes control, you can see right here, torque reduction, driver demand, cylinder pressure limit comes in. Those are preset to control torque, but nothing really crazy happened. Um, and I want to go down here to my wastegate parameters. And I, I've been messing with my layout and the channels. So when I did this run, I had a lot less going on than what I do now. I think I have a lot better control over things. But uh, if we look over here during peak boost, mind you, peak boost happened at, uh, was it? 5300 RPM. So if we go over here, I want to see wastegate canister pressure, actual, it's 21 PSI. Wastegate canister pressure desired, it's 20. Perfect. What was my turbo speed? What was its output? Turbo airflow, desired, 33 pounds a minute. Turbo airflow, 36. A little bit over, that's fine. That's what the throttle's there to do, is to, to close it off and, and Stop it. Our turbo speed was 161,000 RPM. Cool. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let me go ahead and show you one of my most recent logs. And by recent, I mean today, actually. Now, I didn't do a full run because I was getting boost spikes. I was watching the gauge, and if I saw it go past 25, I let off. These are only small spikes of throttle but they tell me everything I need to know. And then this log, I've done a lot to mitigate boost spikes. I've raised my wastegate pressures and I've made sure that anything boost related was adjusted. So I wanna first go ahead and this first spike, cause this was the biggest spike I think I had. Eh, maybe not the biggest, but they all went to about 27 PSI. Like I said, I was watching the gauge, I let off. 27 PSI is too much. If you go and look, my tip desired is 36, tip max is 44. I am hitting my, my torque goal that I have set. I did raise the torque a little bit, not much, just to see if I can get a change, but it shouldn't take, what, 8 PSI more to get only 18 pound feet more torque. The car should be able to achieve that with some timing adjustments. And just to keep in mind, this is with the wastegate actuator arm adjusted a few turns shorter, but we're still not even where it's supposed to be, technically speaking. It's still not optimally adjusted according to the manufacturer specs. Pressure desired is 40, wastegate pressure actual is 45 PSI. So there's a lot of pressure on that thing trying to open it up, but nothing's working. And I don't know if you've noticed, but the turbocharger speed is still the same as it was before I adjusted it. that wastegate arm. Where the hell is it? 35 pounds a minute, and this is letting off. Remember before, it was flowing, what, 35, 36 pounds a minute at 20 PSI, and now we're flowing 30 pound, 35 pounds a minute at 27 PSI? You kidding me? So this is crazy to me to think that that's making that big of a difference. The car's hitting the torque I want, but it's doing it at a boost pressure that's not, that I don't like. And I did this multiple times. You can see a stab here, 27. Another stab, and then 26, almost 27. 27 every time, but yet, there isn't one parameter in here that I have adjusted that should be targeting 27. Outlet pressure is set to 24, which is very close to stock. I didn't adjust anything boost related. The only thing I've been trying to do is control this damn surging since adjusting the wastegate actuator arm. I feel like I'm working against myself at this point if I don't go back to setting the wastegate actuator arm where it was when I first started logging, which once again, isn't even right. But like I said, the car was actually doing everything it should have done. Honestly, I could probably have set that back to where it was. And now what I've learned I can probably set back back to where it was on the stock calibration and then make changes to some of the overboost thresholds so it doesn't throw the overboost. I bet you this thing would have run perfectly fine without any 
spikes and boost. Now, I know that someone's gonna have something to say, especially someone who knows ins and outs of tuning with HP tuners and Fords or whatever and has been doing this, but let me tell you that I'm learning as I go. I know this car better than anyone on the internet right now because my hands have put all of this together I've logged this car way before this engine took a crap. I've, I, I know a lot what this car can and can't do in the limits of certain parameters because I've just been paying attention to it for a very long time now. So I know this car better than anyone. Therefore, if I feel like adjusting the wastegate actuator arm in a unrecommended position is actually what I need to make this setup work for me, what the hell's going on over there? You really need your music that loud? Good lord, I can hear him go all the way down the road. Anyway, like I was saying, since I know this combo better than anyone else on the internet, then I'm gonna do what I feel is best for this combination right here. Even if it's not considered correct, which I, look, at this point, what I've learned is there isn't one thing, especially when it comes to this kind of stuff, I don't care what's considered correct. There's more than one way of doing things. And if this is how I have to do things, then so be it. What I've learned is not to say there isn't actually some factual backing to why people do things a certain way. Um, let me put it this way, especially when it comes to the performance car industry, just because something is considered wrong doesn't mean it's actually wrong. A lot of times people consider something wrong, it's because they don't know another way. So if the industry teaches only one way of, of solving a problem, then whoever learns that information is only going to assume that's the correct answer and every other answer is, no, is actually incorrect, which is a horrible mentality because people do that. They rely on information like it is set in stone and it's it's not even science itself is not set in stone and if anyone believes that is just horribly mistaken so though we know a lot i know there's more than one way of doing things the thing is i don't care how it gets done as long as the results are favorable and i it does what i need to do i don't care if manny mo or jack says it's wrong if I did what I need to do and there's nothing bad out of it, then it's right. Plain and simple. So with that out of the way, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm readjusting that. So that's where it was. I'm going to flash the factory tune again, completely stock, take another log with my revised um, data channels. And then I'm just restarting everything. I already got all my other things saved. I know where to go for some of the limiters and, and whatnot. So I got all of that saved. We're just going to start over. That's the only thing I can think to do because at this point I'm just chasing my tail and I don't understand why the car is not responding no matter what I do. The only thing I did was adjust that arm and now we're back to having problems we were having when I first put the engine back together. Remember that video? You know, the one right here where I stabbed it, boost came in really hot and you heard some bad noises. Yeah, well, we're, we're still kind of getting that. And it was completely fine when the wastegate was adjusted accordingly. So I'm gonna go ahead and readjust that, flash the stock tune, get out on the road. We'll do another pull and see what happens. All right, we just flashed the stock tune back, got the wastegate adjusted where it was, I'm pretty sure it's close to where it was. So just gotta let things warm up here and we'll go out and take a look at things. So I guess let's get on the road here and see how it does. So I can already confirm that normality, at least what I'm used to the car doing has been restored. We're back to where we were. No overboost, no actual overboost, no crazy boost spikes. Start logging. Cool, we're logging. Stop it! <laughs> you can see it didn't get very far before it was unhappy with itself. But I only saw a boost go up to about 21, 22, which is exactly where it's supposed to be, and it went up and stayed there. That's the important part. It stayed there. Consistent boost is important. So, let's take this data that we have here. Let's go and check it out. 
All right, so here is the log we just did, and we're back to where we were. Unfortunately, I must not have this set up right, the injector duty cycle. I'd love to have known that, but we got some other good information we didn't have before. So uh, first and foremost, yeah, we can see right here, um, tip in. That's when the throttle opens up. And then it closes down as soon as boost kind of ramps in. So what is it 21 PSI? And at 21 PSI, it made its target torque, actually made it less than 20, 353 at 20 PSI. So yeah, it made its torque. It did what it needed to do with 20 PSI. That's what I'm saying. There's no way it needs 28 to make what it was making before, um, that was just way off. So yeah, you can see our desired tip is 35, actual tip's 39, but this is, what's been happening is that the tip pressure just runs away. You can see it starts diverging right here, 44, 27. Remember in stock file, it only takes five PSI difference for it to throw it off, less than, it's like four and change. So it didn't even make it through the whole pool before it shut itself down, which is unfortunate. Uh, I'd like to have seen it go up to red line, but I know what I need to fix to fix that now. So that part's not even a big deal. So yeah, I'm happy with this because boost is under control. And if you look, I know there's more in it because look at the wastegate duty cycle at the bottom. Uh, when I go tip in, it goes to 90%. That's how it is in the factory file. To, to help it spool up, ramp in, and then it tapers down to help control. Now let's see, I want to see what canister pressure was. Here's canister pressure. Uh, at tip in, we were 14 PSI. Desired was 8. And then at max boost, we were 20... 0.33 PSI, canister pressure desired is 18. Yeah, there's a lot better control over boost. There doesn't need to be nearly as much pressure on the wastegate. We're still spinning the turbo as fast as we were before. Look at turbo speed. Remember, it was like 168,000. So we get up to 166, 67, yeah. So we're getting the same turbo speed even with the wastegate cracked open. So those cams are doing a lot for exhaust flow, which is what's helping this turbo stay spooled even with the wastegate cracked open, mechanically open. So yeah, man, this is, this is a lot better. I'm going to leave things where they are. This is a better starting point. Oh, and like I was saying, I kind of got sidetracked about the wastegate duty cycle. Um, if you, let me highlight it over here so you can keep track of it. Then it goes, when we hit max boost to 57%. So yeah, there's definitely wastegate duty cycle to be had. Like I can make more boost even with this thing cracked like it is um, with wastegate adjustments. Don't ask me why I need to run it the way I do, but this is where I see favorable starting point right here. If anyone were to say, oh yeah, well you just need to adjust this, that, and the other and put the wastegate arm at the correct preload, and eh, no. I'm going to do it this way because this is, this looks right to me. So back to square one. I'm doing it like this because I want to showcase the ups and downs, the trials and error and the, the logic, the mindset and everything it takes to learn this. Like, this is what you would have to do trying to learn this yourself because I'm going off all the same material you're gonna read. I'm learning everything as I go. I'm learning what works, what doesn't work. And this is the process. This is how you learn. So this is what I'm going to do. I got everything ironed out back to where I know the car is safe. Now I'm gonna take everything I've learned on the first like five revisions I've made for this. And then I'm gonna take everything I've learned from all of the researching, all of the, you know, looking around on the forums, trying to diagnose these overboosting issues and all the things I've learned from that. And then I'm gonna take all those changes and rewrite a whole new tune. I'm not adjusting the torque table at all. I'm not adjusting any of that. All I'm doing is adjusting limiters, the fueling, and the tip threshold so it doesn't throw a check engine light. Once I do that, the car should run good. That'll be in a whole nother video of doing that and seeing how the car responds. 
and seeing if we can make any improvements. And hopefully once I do that, once I see that the car is responding and I can make incremental improvements, then we'll be on a roll. But that's gonna be a whole nother video. This is a whole series of tuning. So just be sure to keep a lookout for that video. But I think I finally, okay, I don't know if I finally, but I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish in this video, which means it's gonna wrap it up here. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with everyone you know. If you wanna see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a lookout for next Cars Creative video.